Hi, I'm Philip Sparks and Shan Heron from Easiest Swing. Welcome today to our video about how hard to hold the golf club. How much pressure should you have? How much tension should there be in a golf swing? And uh, the grip is the first place that you should be looking. If we're, if 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 I hold the grip, uh, if I hold the hold the club tight, the rest of my arms, shoulders get tight. I can even feel my my hips reacting to that. <laughs> so yes, grip pressure is a great place to start with. The new deadly don't in the easy swing, the fourth deadly don't. Keep your swing tension free. So. Tension. Ah. <laughs> we don't want tension. So let's just have a little think about how hard to hold a golf club. Let's start with the very word itself, grip. You've got a grip on your golf club. You're going to grip it. This is what your first instinct is to do. You've been told it's a golf grip. You're going to grip it. Well, let's just think about gripping things. What happens? A car mechanic grips a spanner because he's got a rusty nut that he's got to get off and he's going to grip it and he's going to have tension. But would a surgeon hold a scalpel like that? No, they would hold a scalpel. They would hold a scalpel. They wouldn't grip a scalpel. Wouldn't grip Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So we think the word grip is actually wrong. Yes. We should think yes. in your own mind about yes. holding your golf club. Yes. So how tight should we hold a golf club, Shan? Well, that's the question. And we encourage you to play around and be curious and be playful and, you know, um, but we're going to, we're, we're going to give you, uh, an idea of how, how, how tightly we hold the golf club. And a great thing to do here is measure it on a scale of zero to 10. Mm. So let's just do this together. If I'm holding this as zero, Philip can take the thing out of my hand. And if I'm holding it at 10, if I'm gripping it at 10, he can't even turn. He can't even how, turn it from my... Yeah, look uh, how tight he is know. in his arms he, and shoulders. He, 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 yeah, yeah, it's all rigid. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's 10. So that's 10 and that's zero. And um, this scale is a great idea of how we can communicate to you how we hold the club. Let's... Well, let's, let's do that, let's, Chad. Let's, let's do Let that. me just hold my golf club where my natural... Uh, hold is on the golf club nowadays. It's, this is something I've learned. It's not something I did instinctively because I was taught to grip the golf club, but in recent times I've learned how to hold it. And so I'm, I can think of that number on that scale. And Shan, if you take hold of the club head and just start moving it around for, for me and just see what happens. Well, I'm able to move the club head and Philip's hands respond. Now, if Philip was holding it too loosely, like a zero or a one, I would be able to turn the club head and his hands wouldn't be responding. And if Philip's holding it at an eight or a nine, I'm not even able to turn the club head. So this gives you a rough idea yeah. on them. Um, so uh, for me personally, uh, if, if we were looking on that scale from zero to 10, I'm aiming around two. I probably need just enough yeah just yeah. enough hold on the golf club that it's not going to come flying out of my hands around the that's two or three two or three scale for me yeah yeah that's yeah. it that's yeah. so pretty low yeah. um and something we can actually now then add into this as well is something we hear a lot about which is power because you, you tend to think tension gives you power and i just want to talk to you a little bit about where the power is in a golf swing because i think we often forget that the power is not necessarily in us and it doesn't need to be in us it needs to be in that thing. That's where we want the power, not in us. So where is the power going to come from? Well, let me just show you this little demonstration, Shan, and just see how we get on with this. So I'm just going to swing this golf club loosely from my thumb and forefinger there, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And just now I'm just going to stop the club by putting my hand in the way. Oh, uh, uh, I heard that. Mm, that's That thing which has no power because I'm only holding it with my thumb and forefinger, that hurt me a little bit. But it doesn't end there, Shan, because that's not where a golf club swings from. It swings from the shoulder and my arm. And if I now extend that and swing it, just keeping the shoulder still for a moment, like you to volunteer to put your no, leg in the way. No, thank you. No, But there's no power. You. There's no power. There's no power. I'm not doing anything. So you think that that won't hurt if I put get your leg in the way? Yeah, you can see there is power in that head. And I'm not doing anything. I'm just swinging it. What about if I now turn 
What would that do to your leg if that got in the way there? Or my hand. Or your hand. It would take your leg off, probably. Yeah. So it's, it's, it just shows that there is a tremendous amount in the, of power in the club head, which is coming from swinging the club head. And it doesn't come from tension. It doesn't come from stiffness. In fact, really, when your muscles get tense and stiff, it's like putting a foot brake on your golf swing. It's going to stop things from moving. And this is something we see such a lot of the time with, with a club golfer, is that as they're coming into the ball, they're tightening up to hit this ball a long way. What are they doing? They're putting the brakes on. Everything's before they get stopping to the ball. before they get to the ball. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you want to release true power, that you'll get that club head swinging and you just encourage it through with a nice simple body movement and you get loads of power then. Now in, uh, in traditional golf teaching, they teach us to not use the hands and wrists. <laughs> and if I'm being told not to use my hands and wrists, that's likely to increase tension in my hands and wrists. At the easiest swing, we love you to uh, use these magnificent tools that we were born with. And um, you'll notice that I'm holding a, a swing, uh, a hole-in-one club in my hand, swing trainer, the only training aid we use at the easiest swing. And this encourages me to use my hands. Why? Because there's a click. And if I get my coordination, my swing speed, my rhythm going, uh, I can click this implement. And you'll notice if you have one of these, if you don't, I recommend you go and buy one. It's, as I say, it's the only training aid we use, but this encourages you to use your wrists and your hands. You will find if you don't use your wrists and hands, you will not be able to get this to click. You can't create any swing speed. It creates tension, stiffness. Look at that. So much easier, so much more relaxed. And yet you heard that clicked when the other ones didn't click. So it's delivering more power to the club head. And that's what we love about that. these devices, the hole-in-one and the swing caddy, is it teaches you yourself, you can feel it for yourself when you release and relax and let go of your tension in the golf swing, that you can start to deliver more power and actually get more distance with less effort. Mm -hmm. More power with less effort. Sounds good, folks? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So we hope you've enjoyed watching this video. And uh, please, if you have, share it with us. Let us know. We're always keen to know what you think. And don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>